today we're going to start thinking about our new history topic, World War I. And we're going to travel back in time to think about where it all began and start our timeline. The First World War began on the 28th of July 1914. It ended on the 11th of November 1918. What makes November the 11th still special today? Well, we celebrate the end of the First World War every year with an observed silence on the 11th of November at 11am, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. This is a special time to remember all those who fought in the war and the millions of people who lost their lives. It's also a special time to remember the people who are still fighting today. We also remember all the people who do lots of other jobs to help during a war. We remember the nurses, the doctors, the people in the factories and all of the animals. All of the people that have made a sacrifice to help us today. We also remember the families of those people who were left at home. It's a time to say thank you and show our respect. So why did the First World War start? Well, this is a man called Archduke Franz Ferdinand. In 1914, he was due to become King of Austria-Hungary. However, before he was able to take the throne, he was assassinated by a Serbian group called the Black Hand. This event was seen as the main cause of the First World War. However, there are several other events that led to the battle. We also need to know about the colonisation of Africa. The early 1900s in Europe was a relatively peaceful time, with lots of countries growing in wealth. Many European countries colonised countries in Africa, as shown on the map above. Can you see? The red areas were colonised by France. Can you name some? You're right. Algeria is an example, and so is Chad. The green areas were colonised by Italy. Can you name an example? You're right, Libya. The blue areas were colonised by Great Britain. Can you name an example? You're right, you could have said Egypt. And that leaves the yellow areas being colonised by Spain. Can you name an example? You're right, the Western Sahara. Only Ethiopia and Liberia were free from European control. During the early 1900s, Britain and France were considered very powerful because they owned lots of countries in other parts of the world, which were mainly Asia and Africa. At this time, Germany did not own any other countries and were not considered as powerful as Britain and France. They wanted to become more powerful, so began building large warships and creating a strong army. This started to concern other countries, and so they started to do the same thing too. Many countries began to set up alliances with each other. Alliances are like special friendships. This meant that countries would support each other and defend each other in case of war. There were two main alliances, the Triple Entente. This was an agreement between Britain, France and Russia. Triple means three. Can you recognise the three flags? Which flag is the British flag? Which flag is the French flag? And which flag is the Russian flag? You're right. The top flag is British, the middle flag is French, and the bottom flag is Russian. And the Central Powers. This was an agreement between Germany and Austria-Hungary. Can you recognise their flags? You're right. The flag for Austria-Hungary is in the bottom corner, and the German flag is in the bottom middle. Now what's the remaining flag? You're right. It's Italy. We haven't mentioned them yet. Although Italy already had an alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary, they decided that when the war started, they were going to remain neutral. This meant that they would not fight for either side. Some countries grew nervous of the larger armies and warships that other countries had available to them, and they decided they needed to defend each other if there was going to be a war. If one of the countries was to attack, the others in the alliance would have to go into conflict to help them. Can you remember Archduke Franz Ferdinand that I mentioned earlier on? 
Well, he was visiting armies in Serbia in June 1914, when a Serbian group called the Black Hand assassinated him during his visit. After a number of attempts from members of the Black Hand, a man called Gavrilo Princip finally shot and killed the Archduke. Because of the Triple Entente alliance between Britain, France and Russia, Britain had to enter the war when France invaded the German army. The war began for Britain at the Battle of Mons in Belgium in August 1914. This was just the beginning. Do you think Britain did the right thing entering the war? Do you think they needed to keep their promise? Why? We will continue our journey through World War I over the next few weeks. Today we're going to use our reflection of how it all started to complete our task.